What's up, y'all? Back again. This one's gonna be another quick video. All right, um, maybe 15 minutes or so. This is just a part two on fuel, um, setting up the fuel regulator, um, the fuel lines going from the tank, the return, and the lines going up to the cabin. All right. Um, there's some stuff I have to remove and delete um, the OEM lines and OEM regulator slash filter. Um, but let's jump right into it. I'm gonna take it all to my little mini workbench and we're gonna start getting the AN fittings together because I use 6 AN for everything um, and get the regulator together. And then we're gonna start pulling out the old stuff and then we're gonna test it, make sure everything runs, purges everything, pressure holds, yada yada. Let's go. All right, here's my little makeshift bench area. I got my vise over here we're gonna use to put the AN fittings together. Uh, I got the fuel regulator over here, um, 6 AN line, 20 foot worth. And don't mind all these, this is just stray 6 AN and this is a uh, 12 AN um, for the dry sump uh, in the trunk so it won't leak out in the cabin. So don't mind that stuff, sorry for the mess. I have a ton of AN fittings here from the millions of swaps I've done, y'all know. Just got a ton of, ton of BS in here. Um, but yeah, right off the bat, let's start with the fuel filter. Um, it is a brand new Wix. What's the part number? 33737, okay? Um, these get a very bad reputation, okay? This is a fuel filter and regulator in one. It will hold 58 PSI. Um, these come stock on the Corvette C5s, okay? The reason these get such a bad rap is because people are going on eBay and buying the China stuff. They're buying the rebranded China stuff like um, Summit had one, okay? And you'll see in the reviews, did not hold. It had 70 PSI, 65 PSI, yada, yada. You want to get the Wix, okay? Don't even buy AC Delco because AC Delco is just rebranded Wix, okay? Now, if you don't have all these markings, all right, all these numbers, and it'll say Wix, It'll say Wix 33737 on it, okay? Right there, I don't know if y'all can see it, but here's a part number. I'm talking in circles now, but these are great for this platform because it, it goes in the OEM spot, all right? You take the old one off um, and you just use the same bolt, bolt it right on, okay? Um, for you guys who like are 600 to the wheel and less, you stroker guys who are NA, or you guys are just doing in a 5.3, 4.8, or LS3, LS2, LS1, 60 iron block, whatever. This is all you're gonna need, okay? It will hold the pressure, all right? Again, this is OEM, um, OEM manufacturer. Uh, this is a rebranded AC Delco. It is Wix, okay? Do not go get China. That's where the bad rep comes from, okay? It's the China stuff, all right? Now, my pump is a DW200. It's a 255 liter per hour. Um, so if you're at 255 liter per hour or less, you're good. Some people have good luck with DW300, but I think you're pushing it because, um, you know, a 300 uh, do you for some light boost. So, like I said, if you're around my power goals or less, um, I'm sorry, I said 600. I said I'm at 500 to the wheels, right? 550. When you start climbing up to 600 to the wheels, that's when you might want to put a 300 in um, or, or use an external fuel pressure regulator like an Aeromotive, okay? Um, but yeah, that's my spiel on this. Do not buy China, okay? Get the 33737, okay? Um, this was about 88 bucks um, at O'Reilly's, okay? It was the only one I had in stock. Summit was out, um, I couldn't find it anywhere else. But this was actually in stock locally to me. Couldn't use a military discount for 10% off because I bought it online just to make sure I didn't walk in there and somebody took it. But yeah, um, I threw this on just to make sure it fit. But um, this is a... The return is a 5 16th, okay? You want a 5 16th to 6 AN is what this is. Always get the screw type, okay? I always use screw type. Do not use the clip on, the quick disconnect. Do not use that, because they will leak. They can and will leak, all right? Um, it's a super easy install. They, they come with a little grease inside, and you just, I like to spin them on so you don't pinch up the fittings. And boom, you're on, okay? Use a little screw type, slide it open side in. I'm gonna have to push this up a little bit. I right, slide the open side in, back down, and just spin it on, okay? Now I'll go, I will cinch this down later on. But like I said, the reason I like these is because it keeps it tight, um, all right? They don't move around. And I actually had one leak 
okay not this specific one the one on my intake uh long ago back in the genesis days i used the push one with the clips and it leaked when i primed it so i immediately looked online i seen some people burning their stuff down um whatever just use the screw type okay guys that's all i got um and this end is a three ace to a three a.m all right so it looks like it's three ace okay simple just push that in Boom, it's in. Okay. And there you go. That's how we set that up. Alright. Again, I'm using um I'm using 6 a.m. stuff, okay? It's an example. Alright, 6 a.m. straight. There's another 6 a.m. straight, so that's what it'll look like. Alright. Now, I like the, the nylon braided, alright? Some people like the stainless steel. I'm just a fan of the nylon braided. Um, I like the black, um, and there's steel. There's steel lined inside anyway. Okay, so this is what I use. All right, so I am going to walk you through on how to do one of them, and then I'm just gonna time lapse the rest. Okay, first thing you want to do, because I am not using the straight on this side, I have to do a 90 degree off the top of the fuel assembly. All right, if I can get this all the way out. All right, you have this, this, put this. Down. You need a little cover, okay? Pull this off. Of course, this is all frayed. And what you want to do, okay? If you look in, if you look in there, it's like it's almost like it's threaded. Uh, you, you see that? All right. So you want to get the, the head of it started, the tip of it started. And as you push down, you spin. And it'll catch, okay? And you just keep screwing. Oh, man. Alright. It's just about bottomed out. Let's see. Ugh. I can go a little bit more. Uh, let me grab my phone. Y'all, I smashed my phone and broke it, y'all. So I lost a whole bunch of content and shit. That's why my dad is in my um, screensaver. Rest in peace to him. Uh, can y'all see in there? Y'all see how it's like almost bottomed out, the hose? Alright. It's almost there. Let me just keep pushing until it's... Yeah, and it's all the way down, okay? So that's what we're looking for, okay? Now that it's seated, what I like to do, because you can use oil, some people use um, Dawn dish soap, which I have in the past, but I have some assembly lube I'm gonna use, okay? Um, that's what I use to sell in the engine. Um, what I like to do is just put some on the head and on the threads, okay? Because what's gonna happen is I use the vise, you put it in, all right, pops in and then you just screw it. You have to screw it all the way in, okay? Um, now, what I usually do is mark down here. Now, when I'm doing it fresh, I usually don't, okay? So hopefully it doesn't move because if it moves too much, um, like the, the cap can come off, threads can push it down, and it won't get a proper seal, okay? Um, but I like to do is just give it force as I'm doing it, okay? That probably does not make sense to you who don't, who aren't experienced with AN fittings, okay? I hope this is helping you. Um, but if you just mark it, um, I don't I think I have a marker around me anywhere, so I'm not gonna worry about it now. But these are reusable. Usually when I take them off and, you know, put them on a new line or something, that's when I'll mark just to make sure, you know, peace of mind. But anyway, let's get this all lubed up. Okay, there we go, got some assembly lube all over. Let it drizzle down in there. Alright. Actually what I'm gonna do 
is I'm just gonna, I'm gonna attach it here and then do it, okay? So, sorry, one second. All right, so I got it tightened in the vise real good. Now, this is when you wanna tape it up, okay? Or they even make vise uh, actual, you know, holders for the hands, but I don't give a damn, all right? I'm not too picky on appearance, okay? So now this is all lubed up. Push it in and get it threaded and get it started. And there it is, it's caught, okay? Now I like to seat mine all the way. I know the bigger the end fitting you have, the harder it is. Like 10 a.m.s and 12 a.m.s doing those, it's a pain. Um, but 6 a.m. should be no problem. All right, I just take an adjustable. Um, and if it's, you know, if I'm using, if I'm doing supercharger lines or lines that are visible, then I'll tape them up before I do this. But this is gonna be under the car, out of sight, out of mine. I do not care. I am just gonna take the adjustable and just keep spinning and spinning and spinning until it's seated, okay? So. Okay, as y'all can see, it's bottomed out. Let's go ahead and remove it. That's what it's supposed to look like, okay? There's no gaps. All right, everything's sealed, everything's taut. Not taut, but everything's snug, not moving. And there you have it. Um, now you always, whenever you're cutting these lines to size, you always wanna blow them out, right? Run them on the water, water getting through it, blowing all the debris out, okay? Because you don't want this to get into your ejectors or your bearings or whatever and system you're, you're putting together, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is snake the rest of this through the bottom of the car, um, just so I can know where I need to cut, where it meets um, this guy, okay? So right now I'm just gonna go, well right now I'm gonna go under the car and y'all can see what you have to remove under there. And um, yeah, I guess I'll just do some removal on the time lapse. Um, Compare the OEM one to this, where to go, and then I'll snake it through, and you know we connect it that way, yada yada. So, okay, under the car now, still some wiring and bullshit. I need to take out these old sensors that I cut out. Um, but this is the blue line is to evap, which I'll be deleting. Um, so pretty much, I need to get all this stuff out of here. Here's the OEM fuel filter, right here, and feed. I'm gonna have to fish through and just snake it through here and I'll reuse this little connector or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's how I'm gonna do it. Uh, and I'm gonna have to remove this little bracket and get a better view on it and see which direction I'm gonna go as far as mounting, which I'm pretty sure I can just use the bolt that's in there and it'll be fine, so let's see. All right, got the cover removed and it's nothing what I thought it was. You can see the return, the fuel pressure regulator right here. I thought it was all in the filter, but it's not. Uh, but no biggie. This filter bracket, the bolt uh, where it goes is where um, the GM version is gonna go. So it's gonna make it easy. All right, so that's what the, the OEM regulator looks like. I'm glad GM makes two into one. It makes it a lot simpler. See how big the OEM uh, fuel filter is and all the fuel that came out. But the one on the outside, okay, nearest the exhaust, all right, the one closest to the inside of the car, that is the feed, okay? Because I was in there messing with this, looking at the bottom of the car, and for sure, this is what it was. So let's see if I can just snip this out. I guess not. I'm just gonna cut the hose, see the hose end, and then pull it out from the top because when I yanked on it hard from the top, this moved, this went upwards. So this definitely is feed and this is return, okay? Okay, so you can see it's the brake line. All right, um, let me get my hand free. Okay, this is the evap shit, all right? I'm gonna have to, yeah, push that off somewhere. This is the feed. I gotta un 
button that there and pull it out from the top. It's no biggie. But the hard part is, without dropping a tank, I have to get the end fitting and snake it in through there. Try to push it to the left, get it all the way across, and pull it out through the top. So, you know, wish me luck. All right, so on my, on my quest to not drop this tank, um, this is the driver's side. Boom, all right, this is where the turn goes, okay. Um, I can see the floor from, you guys probably can't see it too well, right here, all right. That's the floor, all right. Right in that area, that's the floor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to snake one side of that 20 foot hose all the way down and then there's room to push it across okay and it's hopefully it goes straight across no problem uh, but it's definitely the easiest way to do this so fingers crossed the cap came off because I kept going in and out but I finally got it straight across all right and that way it doesn't come out from the middle area where the drive shaft is you don't want that you want to snake it over straight over all right and there's the opening when you go straight down from there, all right so I'm just gonna snake this straight downward and it's gonna come out on the proper side okay too easy. Alright. See? Alright. Back under the car. Um, here's the bulk of the line. It's all out. Um, like I said, make sure you cross over, okay? You have to come to the driver's side because there's an actual section for the wire to come out. Or not the wire, the hose to come out. Um, you don't want to come out through the middle, all right, because the drive shaft goes in the middle, okay? You don't want to come out anywhere else but here because you can even use the OEM um, mounts. Oh, shit, just broke one. Cool, but um, I'm going to just clearance them to fit. I'm going to remove the return line and make, make my own out of the excess 6 a.m. line. Um, but, yeah, now that that's routed, I can get this measured and cut. Um... But before I do that, let me get the uh, fuel regulator mounted where it needs to go so I can get this measured properly. And then the excess I will take and make a proper return. Well, not a proper, but a new return. And then um, get the line up to the cat, up to the engine bay. All right, so let me get the fuel regulator mounted. All right, so I got the uh, pressure regulator slash filter mounted. And I did it in such a manner that this will still give it some protection. All right, sorry, I'm trying to do everything on my phone, one hand. It'll be something like this. All right, mounts right there for it, so. Um, there we go. So it's way in there under the protection. But there is a little piece, I had to cut this piece out. Uh, it was up in the front side. Let's see right there, I don't know if you can see that. I had to cut this out just to give it away for the output. All right, so now I got the line and you don't want it too tight. You wanna give it some slack. All right. And just about here. So I'm just gonna mark this off, and wrap it with tape, and then cut it, put the straight end on it, attach it, and do the same for um, the feed and the, man, draw a blank, and the return. All right, so just a quick tip. Any portion you're gonna cut, sorry, the lighting is trash, but just wrap it real tight with some electrical tape or whatever kind of tape you have. All right, and 
keeps it from fraying and keeps it more together. Alright, so this um, straight hose in with the female female size 6N, alright? So it's gonna go right into the feed of the GM C5 Corvette fuel filter and regulator. Um, but yeah, make sure you blow these out. Um, I might have to go into the back and top the car and run some fluid through it or blow it out um, just to get some of the rubber and everything in there and, and cloth and metal that's, you know, residual stuff that went back in there for me cutting it. Now, what I'm gonna do after this is route the engine bay line, snake it through however I need, and hopefully I have enough left over to complete the um, return. But if not, I am just going to use the hard line already there and do it that way. So uh, let's keep moving. All right. So what's I see? I got it away from the long tubes. I'm still gonna heat wrap this thing, um, but just for the sake of getting this mounted. Um, whew, um, you can see, man, this is really tough. I don't really have the hands or space, but you can see it's gonna be routed something like this, right? Probably gonna cut around this area, give it enough slack. But please, please, please keep it away from the long tubes and heat wrap it, okay? Um, pretty straightforward. And as y'all can see, the leftover line, I'm gonna be able to make a return. So let me go up to the cabin. I'm sorry, I keep saying cabin, but engine bay. Let me show you guys what I did. So initially I tried to go around under here, around here, whatever. Stupid, don't do that. I'm just gonna put a 90 degree fitting on here. I thought I had some 90s, I don't. The only 90s I have are uh, barbed. And don't dare put a barbed fitting. Um, so it's gonna be a 90 degree fitting here, right off this wall. I'm gonna get a bracket, a rubber one, and just affix it to this wall and on the bottom so it's out of sight. Not out of sight, it's out of harm's way of the long tubes or rubbing up on, against the valve cover and, you know, leaking over time. So again, it's gonna be a 90 degree fitting. But for now, uh, this is just for mounting to help you guys get an idea of what's involved. Um, there you go, got it back on. But yeah, again, it's gonna be a 90 degree fitting back there, something like that away from rubbing things. And then I just have like a rubber mount, um, probably gonna mount it up here somewhere. And self tapping screw, get it fixed up there. All right, just to show you, these are the little rubber insulated mounts I was talking about. Um, they just go around, you know what I'm saying? And whatever. It sucks with one hand, but and get the wire cinched in there and mounted right there. So it's just out of the way of everything that can make it rub rub through or burn it up, okay? So again, 90 degree fitting. I'm gonna have a 90 degree fitting here. So this comes right off the rail, straight back. All right, so the final, final piece of the puzzle is the return line here. Man, this thing's not focusing, I don't know why. But anyway, you can see it's all cinched down, everything's good. I'm gonna snake this down head first to attach to that um, filter slash regulator. And this side is just gonna slide right on, right there, replace that line. Um, nice and old rubber. And damn it, I just dipped it straight in all that junk, but it's just gonna put it right back on top um, and get a clamp and get it nice and tight and there we go. Okay, I got the front mounted down here. Got the filter mounted. 
self tapping screw. Slag with some blue Loctite. It's solid, not going nowhere. And I just grinded the original mounts out. So these are in there. They can still wiggle around a little bit, but they're pretty cinched down. All right, so I gotta finish up the back here, finish up with the return line. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and throw a cover on this. All right, the return is in. I just put two, um, two clamps on it. Um, like I said, returns aren't under much pressure, if at all. So um, I'm not gonna worry about this leaking. It's on there pretty tight. I just put a zip tie here, just for good measure. Uh, it's not going anywhere. Everything's solid. Um, you see over there. Now, it's for that time to prime it. All right, now it's tucked under there. I like the one of the previous owners scraped something up here. I don't know, but it's in there, tucked away safe. With some heat shielding, debris shielding. Oh. Yeah, let me see if I can zoom out. Oh, there we go. See the lines are good. Lines are secure. Going up into the tank. And the turn is on this side, driver's side, and the passenger goes across. Um, well, the feed goes across to the passenger side where the fuel pump is. So, uh, there we go. About wraps it up, guys. I guess I'll prime it, make sure everything comes out and no leaks. But yeah. Everything's grounded. Well, I'm sorry, not grounded. Everything's sealed up. Fuel, nice and clean. Let me cover this back up. Now let's go check for some leaks. Well, there are no glaring leaks um, that I can see, but it's important to note um, the injector should be in next week. Once those are in, I'll prime it, make sure it holds pressure and everything, and then that's the true test. All right, so. All right, guys, just wrapping up the fuel, just a little outro. Um, as you can see, everything was redone with 6 hand line. Um, I just gotta fix that one fitting at the rail to be a 90 degree um, to get it out of the way of the valve cover and everything, like I stated a few times. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully you guys can improve upon what I did. Y'all know I, I got the, the, what I dubbed the K-Man mentality, right? Get it done. Um, maybe not the cleanest, but it's not the worst and it's cheap. You know, you don't, you don't spend an arm and a leg. Um, just gives y'all something to reference, all right? So as usual, any criticisms, comments, questions, feel free to reach out to me, hit my line, hit me up on IG, hit me up on Twitter, wherever, wherever you can get my social, okay? Uh, Cause uh, y'all do, do y'all do that, all right? And you know, I appreciate all the feedback, all the questions, everything. I make me feel like my everything I'm doing matters, all right? So y'all take it easy till next week. Oh, real quick, um, I know I said I message I mentioned this on my, on my Instagram, so I, I I forgot to mention it earlier in the video, but I didn't do the drive shaft because I couldn't get to a drive shaft shop during the, um, the hours. It's like eight to five. Um, and close on the weekend. Same with the ABS line, um, but it's, it's no big, I just pushed it back. Um, so the next video I'll be doing is dry sump. I already have most of the stuff. Um, getting the lines routed to, to, to the trunk, uh, cutting the hole in the trunk with the bulkhead fittings and all that. And um, so yeah, keep an eye out for that. Until um, next time guys.